So what's going on guys? My name's Chopper and welcome back everybody to another brand new video today here on the channel. Today guys we're going to be looking at the top 10 things you didn't know about honey blocks. Now with the most recent Minecraft update that's coming out, honey blocks, bees, honeycombs, and much much more have been added. So today we're going to be looking at one of the new best blocks in the entire game. It's got a lot of interesting mechanics and we're going to show off some really cool things that you can do with them. If you guys do go on to enjoy today's video then please show me by dropping a like rating. We're going to go for 1,500 likes on this video. I know you guys could do it. But definitely subscribe if you are brand new to the channel so you don't miss any more videos like this as well. But with all that out of the way and that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into the top 10 things that you didn't know about honey blocks in Minecraft. Coming in today at the number 10 spot is going to be the mechanics regarding the gravity of the honey block. Now, what's so interesting about this is all of the similarities that it shares with the slime block while still being very different in other ways. But as you guys know, trying to place specific materials such as sand or gravel next to a block that's suspended in air, these will not stick and gravity will We'll pull them all the way down. However, the honey block, because it's so sticky, is going to attach to literally anything except the terracotta block, which we'll talk about a little bit later, but the honey block will stick to literally anything just like the slime, and as a matter of fact, you can even stick both the honey block and the slime block to each other as well. Just because these two blocks have very similar rules when it comes to its gravity and stickiness doesn't mean that they're just reskins of each other, and the honey block has a lot more going on with it than just this. Coming today to number nine spot is one of the biggest differences between the brand new honey block and then the slime. And this is the fact that while slime blocks will stick to basically any surface uh, minus terracotta, of course, the honey block will not only stick to other surfaces and of course itself, but it's also going to stick to mobs, players, and animals. This is important as it fundamentally changes player movement and even the way that mobs move on this because of its stickiness. It's almost impossible to move quickly through honey and it also reduces your jump to literally about just a short hop. And that goes for pretty much every other mob and animal within the game too. The reduction of walking speed you get on honey blocks is very similar to that of soul sand. So if you're familiar with how much that slows you down, the honey block is going to feel very familiar in that regard. Coming today to number eight spot is one of the coolest things you can do with fall damage. Now this is interesting. What I'm gonna demonstrate for you is one of the core differences between honey blocks and slimes. Now when it comes to falling off of a high place, obviously taking damage in Minecraft is something you need to be careful about when falling falling far. Now, when you land on honey, what it's going to do in most cases is cut down that fall damage by around 80%. So you can see I fell from a relatively high place, but I didn't lose that much health and I was able to quickly get that heart back as well. Now, the difference here between the honey and the slime is actually quite drastic. As honey softened the blow of the fall and maybe not lose that much health, but I also stuck to the ground. When falling from the same distance onto a patch of slime, what you get is a different result in which you bounce, but the damage is cut down by 100% and you will not take any damage whatsoever. So theoretically, you can still die when falling onto honey and you won't bounce up, but it's significantly unlikely that you will, especially if you have more than half health. All right, guys, coming in at the number seven spot, you ever have an excess of honey, but not a good way to cover your base? Well, listen, I got you. One of the most interesting things that I noticed about honey blocks was the way that mobs behave with them. Now, when you kind of set up like a moat or a defense around a house, what's going to happen is the mobs aren't afraid to walk through the honey. However, they're programmed to find the best route possible where they walk through the honey in the least amount of time. It's very, very interesting. I basically set up an asymmetrical pattern around the house to see which route they would take in order to get to me the fastest, and they seem to know exactly where to go at all times. Now, if you can make this multi-layered, they have no choice but to walk through the honey, but they're always going to look for the fastest route to do it no matter what, even if it involves them going all the way around and not touching the honey at all. It's very strange. But honestly, if you want to multi-layer this, it's not that bad for house protection. It doesn't look that cool, but it works. Moving on and coming in at number six, guys. Now, the biggest difference fundamentally between honey blocks and slimes that you got to know about is that redstone signals, whether you're making some contraptions or maybe some automatic doors, the redstone signal will pass through slime blocks. And that's fundamentally one of the pieces that you need in order for them to function properly. But honey blocks, redstone signals will not actually pass through these. Now, you can still use these to interchange within some contraptions that use slime or honey blocks, but when it comes to signals, these cannot be passed through with honey. Definitely something that's important to know if your contraptions are no longer working when you replace them. Coming in at number five, guys, what I've noticed about honey blocks is that because it decreases significantly the height of that jump, you can no longer jump from a honey block to a full-on block next to you. However, half slabs are no problem at all. You don't even have to jump on them from a honey block. You can simply walk up to it and it'll take you there. But what these two mechanics are going to mean is that the honey block is going to be unbelievably 
really good for setting up parkour. So if you want to have a parkour challenge that's a little bit difficult to do and you want to cut down the reduction of somebody's jump, use a honey block and then you can also use half slabs to determine how the player should be moving throughout your course. But I found that really fascinating as well. Coming in today at the number four spot are going to be some very basic functions that you're going to want to know. A great thing about honey blocks is that they are virtually entirely fireproof. So they are great insulators and resistance against fire. So if you need to line something, particularly a base or a house that you need to completely fireproof, honey is a good insulator for that. And while it isn't ideal, you can pack them into the walls and really line the outside so it can never really catch on fire. But not only that, but another thing you need to know is because the honey block is not completely opaque and some light does pass through it, this is not going to unfortunately prevent all mob spawns. So if your idea is to use this block to block out light and prevent mobs from spawning around it, unfortunately this doesn't do the job entirely because it is still somewhat see-through. There's a lot of variables that go into that, but using the honey block to block out mobs is really not the best option. Coming in today, the number three spot, guys, honey blocks are not a new idea to Minecraft. As this was something, it's been an idea that's been in the works for a quite a long time, but it had an entirely different look a long time ago. So now we know what the honey block looks like currently in Minecraft, but there are two different iterations that you probably haven't seen of them. And this is the first one. It looks just kind of like a block of cheese, to be quite honest. Like, it's the slime block, but a little bit retextured. Now that I look at it more, it looks almost like SpongeBob or, or even SpongeBob's parents. I don't know. The other honey block looks a lot more opaque, and this one kind of looks like a solid block of cheddar. I'm really glad they reworked the texture of this block to make it look a little bit more like honey. I mean, a block of honey in real life, I don't know what that would look like in compared to what it looks like in Minecraft, but this is probably the best looking version that we have of it currently. But these two ones existed at one point or another, and uh, they're not too pretty, to be honest. Let me know which of these three blocks you prefer, the new one, the old one, or the even older SpongeBob looking one. Coming today at the number two spot, you can use honey blocks to make an infinite flying machine. Now, what's so cool about this is the fact that it's incredibly easy to make and it's very effective. This can be made by simply using some pistons, an observer, honey blocks, and a trap door. And when you put your contraption together like this properly, what's going to happen is if you have the platform underneath it, is you'll be able to make a machine that infinitely flies in any direction you want it to. You can move materials using this, you can move players, you can move entire buildings, whatever you want to, and it's so easy to make. But just as it is important to keep in mind, this cannot move vertically once you've already set it in motion. It's going to move horizontally infinitely, but if you want to go up or down. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the capability to do that, but it's still a very cool machine nonetheless, and I definitely recommend you make one of these and try them out. Before we unveil our number one spot, guys, I want to give an honorable mention to another little known function of the honey block. Now, this is not something that happens mechanically within the game, but what the honey block will do just passively will attract more bees around that area, and even if it's ever so slightly, more bees will be closer to that honey block, meaning that the crops that are surrounding that honey block or are in the near vicinity are are going to grow a lot better and is going to be mutually beneficial for both the bees and the crops that you're growing. Because honey blocks are virtually cost-free to make and you can put together a ton of them for very cheap amounts of resources, it's worth having these around not only just because for all of the other functions that we've mentioned, but because it does attract bees and it's going to help you out in the long run for sure. Finally guys, coming in today at the number one spot, one of the most insane things you can do with honey blocks in Minecraft was discovered by my, the first person I saw do it was a Reddit user named Hot say hind. I hope I'm saying that correctly. We were able to put together a fully functioning conveyor belt just using honey blocks, some pistons, and as well as a redstone contraption. And the way that this works is completely functional. And you can build them in your game if need be. It's an unbelievably good way to move resources and stuff, and it just honestly looks sick when it's in motion. As a general rule of thumb, in Minecraft, honey blocks can now be used to substitute a slime block in just about any movable part contraption. But because of the slight difference in mechanics, you're going to want to make sure you're using the right block for the right job. But when honey blocks and bees officially come to Minecraft within the next update, then you can try out all of these mechanics for yourself and get your hands on it. And also, if you find out anything interesting about honey blocks that I did not mention in this video, then feel free to let me know what that is down below inside of the comment section. But guys, if you're interested, I can make a video similar to this to some of the other blocks that recently got added, such as the beehive and stuff like that, and then just even the honey jars itself. So if you want to see a video regarding those, make sure to drop a thumbs up as as well. But if you guys enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you are brand new so you don't miss any more Minecraft videos. I've got some cool videos that I'm working on that I'm going to be putting out very, very soon. So you're going to want to make sure that you stick around and don't miss those. Also, go follow my Twitter if you haven't already. Link will be down below in the description.
question. But anyways, guys, have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you all on the next live stream or the next video. Take it easy, and peace out.